We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of God, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. After Christ died on the cross as a sin offering, the ceremonial law could have no force. Yet it was connected with the moral law and was glorious. The whole bore the stamp of divinity and expressed the holiness, justice, and righteousness of God. And if the ministration of the dispensation to be done away with was glorious, how much more must the reality be glorious when Christ was revealed, giving his life-giving, sanctifying spirit to all who believe? The proclamation of the Law of Ten Commandments was a wonderful exhibition of the glory and majesty of God. Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. The pardon of sin, justification by faith in Jesus Christ, access to God only through a mediator because of their lost condition, their guilt and sin, of these truths the people had little conception. In a great measure, they had lost a knowledge of God and of the only way to approach Him. They had lost nearly all sense of what constitutes sin and of what constitutes righteousness. The pardon of sin through Christ, the promised Messiah, whom their offerings typified, was but dimly understood. The moral law was never a type or a shadow. It existed before man's creation and will endure as long as God's throne remains. God could not change nor alter one precept of his law in order to save man. For the law is the foundation of his government. It is unchangeable, unalterable, infinite, and eternal. In order for man to be saved and for the honor of the law to be maintained, it was necessary for the Son of God to offer himself as a sacrifice for sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He died for us on Calvary. His death shows the wonderful love of God for man and the immutability of his law. Christ is the sinner's advocate. Those who accept his gospel behold him with open face. They see the relation of his mission to the law and they acknowledge God's wisdom and glory as revealed by the Savior. The glory of Christ is revealed in the law, which is a transcript of his character. And his transforming efficacy is felt upon the soul until men become changed into his likeness. They are made partakers of the divine nature and grow more and more like their Savior, advancing step by step in conformity to the will of God till they reach perfection. The law and the gospel are in perfect harmony.